Hi everybody, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos making music with Melodyne. And today what we're going to be focusing on are distorted vocals. Now we've had a lot of requests for this in the past because when you have distorted vocals, there's so much noise and grit built into that vocal that Melodyne can sometimes have a tough time discerning what the pitch is of the note in the first place. And this can happen in other situations too. This can happen if you've got vocals with excessive room resonances. This can happen if you've got tracks that already have uh, effects baked into it. This can happen on exceedingly whispery vocals. And those are all over pop music right now. So I think there are a lot of people out here who might benefit from learning how to overcome some of these hurdles. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at some techniques to help you use Melodyne better in these situations. All right, so let's dive in and take a look at this right here. We've got a track from a band called The Mayor. Let's give it a listen. Okay, and let's hear this vocal isolated just so we know what we're dealing with here. All right, so as you can tell there, not only are we dealing with a yelling, screaming, distorted vocal, there's an effect that is baked into that vocal as well. And if you're looking at the screen right now, looking at the blobs, you can see that Melodyne is having an issue with it by looking at all of these vertical hash marks right here. Now, if you're newer to Melodyne 5 or haven't upgraded yet, when you see these vertical hash marks, that is Melodyne telling you that that part of the blob is sibilant information. And from listening to that vocal, we know that not all of this is sibilant information. So there's too much distortion in there and it's confusing Melodyne. Melodyne can't interpret the data correctly. And that means we have to go into note assignment mode, right? Remember these blobs right here are edit mode. When you come to the wrench, this is note assignment mode. Note assignment mode, if you'll remember, is not for editing the vocal. This is where we tell Melodyne how to interpret the information if there's an issue. Many times there won't ever be an issue and you won't have to go in here, but if there is some problem, this is where we can help Melodyne understand the information more correctly. And right out of the gate, we see a very common one that happens. Here's where all the vocals should be, but Melodyne is saying this one is up here. Now, when you see these hollow silhouettes, that is Melodyne saying there's a little bit of confusion. It is saying that it thinks it could be this note, but it could also be this note right here. This is exceedingly easy to fix. I just have to come to the silhouette where I think it should be and double click like so. And now we've got everything at least at the right note that it should be. Okay. Now we see all of this sibilant information here still. And in Melodyne 5, we've got sibilant handling with the melodic algorithm, which is what you would normally use on vocals. It's automatically checked. If you're using the percussive algorithm, it's automatically unchecked. But if you are opening up an older session, something that was originally done in Melodyne 4 or earlier, that won't be checked. So if you want to utilize this technique, utilize this sibilant handling, you'll have to go in and turn that on. Now, since sibilants are the big problem right here, we could turn that off. However, these words still have sibilants in them. And I don't want to turn that off. I want Melodyne to treat portions of these words as sibilants because one of the beauties of this new thing in Melodyne 5 is that when you alter the pitch of a vocal, Melodyne does not alter the pitch of the sibilant portion. And that's great. If you're, someone is singing a different note, the S or the T or the consonant doesn't change pitch. So this is excellent for vocal pitch correction. So we want it on, but we need to help Melodyne understand better where the pitch portion is. So we're going to leave that on. What we're going to do is first come over here to playback type. Now playback type normally for vocals should be tonal. That's the default. That's what you would normally want there. If you've got something really high that's melodic, like a piccolino, like a violin, you could come to tonal high. But in this case, when there's a lot of noise component in there, I would come to complex. This is more designed for pitches that have noise components built into them. So we're going to switch this to complex. And then now we're going to come down here to the big part, which is a, a huge portion of what we're talking about today, 
which is this robust pitch curve. Now, Melodyne normally has a very high resolution pitch detection algorithm, and that's great for regular vocals. But sometimes when there's a lot of noise built in, that high resolution can cause some artifacts. So we actually need a different type of resolution when Melodyne doesn't recognize it correctly, and that's this right here. When we check this box, nothing happens. And this is good because you may not need robust pitch detection on every single word. It might only be one word that's having a problem. So in this case, we can turn this on and just using this regular tool right here and holding down the option key, I can double click on this blob. Watch what happens. You'll notice it has actually redetected this and given us a larger pitched portion and a smaller sibilant portion. That's exactly what we wanted. In this case, I want to do this to all of the vocals here because they're all distorted like that. So I'm going to hit Command A to select all and do the exact same thing. Hit Option and just double click and it'll think about it for a second. But we're going to see vocals that much more accurately uh, sort of represent the vocals as we hear them. Let's go back in here and listen to this again. Okay, there's no saving yourself. And here we see there's with a sibilant portion at the end for S, no with a little breath after it, saving yourself, right? So there's elf right there. This one I think is where we're still having a little bit of a problem because this is self all the way through the end. And I think a larger portion of this should be pitched information. So we're gonna go back into note assignment mode and I'm gonna show you some techniques that I've worked out a little bit right here that may help. In this particular case, we need Melodyne to recognize more of this as pitched information. And a good way that you can do that is by separating these into smaller chunks. And we can do that by using the note separation tool right here. Now, if you don't where, know where to make separations, you can always use this slider, right? These empty triangles are potential note separations and increasing this slider gets you more of those. However, in this case, what I think I'm gonna do is just come and separate this right where the pitch portion ends. And let's take a look. Now this may require a little bit of push and pull, a little bit of moving things around and finding the best spot. We now see some more pitched information right there, right? So I'm gonna separate it again after that fact and even after that fact right there. And I may go through and move some of these around a little bit. And what I'm looking for are the portions where we get the most pitched information right, with the least amount of sibilant information. And this is a pretty good example of it right here. I may even come to the end and separate that. And now what we've got are, is the actual pitch outline. By putting this into smaller portions, we've moved this into a, a realm where Melodyne recognizes the pitch of these right here. This is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so now we can come back over here to our edit mode and I think all of these should actually be A, right? This is in the key of A major. I've got the bass and the guitar that I brought in ahead of time. And once those were in, I came over to the uh, key track, right clicked and hit analyze keys. And it gave me the song as the key of A major. So I'm pretty sure these vocals should all be right there. So I'm just gonna come to my pitch tool and move all of these up to relatively that note right there. We're gonna get them pretty close. And then afterwards, what I'm gonna do is highlight all of them like so, and just double click them to put them all right on the note like that. All right, let's give this a listen. Okay, good, I like what this is doing right here. Now there's a few other areas where I can tweak this a little bit, right? In between some of these notes, we see some jumps right there. We got a couple of jumps right there. And this is where these transitions become really handy. If you are using the note tool, when you come to the point between two notes, you get this little X tool right here. And what this allows you to do is smooth out those transitions between notes. And you can see exactly what happens with the pitch line right there. We've taken the transition between these notes and smoothed them out a little bit. Just like that. I really like what this is doing right here. Let's give this a listen again. All right, let's hear this in context, right? Let's give this a quick listen 
without Melodyne in context. All right, and let's hear this with Melodyne in context. Okay, I like the way that's sitting a little bit better in the mix right there. I like that. There's a couple of other things that we can do too. If you feel like some of these notes are falling a little bit below, you can come to your tools like pitch modulation and pitch drift and work with those a little bit. Pitch modulation is a perfect example of being able to squeeze that note in a little. Now this is normally designed for vibrato in vocals. And if you use it in places that don't have vibrato, you can get some artifacts, but this is a fairly distorted vocal here, so I might not mind it too much. If you try it and it's too much, you can always back off a little bit, but I'm just gonna pull down on this modulation just a little, and let's hear what this does. Okay, I like that, great. We've improved this a lot, and there's one more thing that I wanna show you. Now, up until now, everything that we've done has been able to be done in Melodyne Assistant or Editor. But for this next part, you need Melodyne Studio, and that is using the sound editor tools right here. I talk about these a lot because I use them all the time. It's a very powerful feature set, not always for making things mangled and sound design, but sometimes just for subtle corrections that are really useful. And I've talked about this one before too, but I do this on all of my vocals. When you open up the sound editor, you'll see harmonics and you will see one, two, three, four, et cetera. One right here, that's our fundamental. Two is our the next harmonic, the next harmonic. But there is this one right here that is empty with just this little hash mark right next to it. This is all of the information that is below the fundamental. So it's a lot of guttural noise that is not necessarily germane to the pitch. And I find on many tracks like vocals and guitars and other pitch instruments, Clearing that out can help a lot. Let's just pull that one all the way down right there. And I'm gonna bypass this so we can hear it without it. Here it is. Let's hear that in isolation again, just to get ourselves ready for it. Okay, I'm gonna bring back our sound editor right here with the lowest uh, things below the fundamental removed. Cleaner to me, cleaner and clearer while still being distorted and gritty. Let's go back and hear this in context with the whole song. No Melodyne first. Okay, and let's bring Melodyne back in. I like that a lot. I think it fits better in the song right there and stands out a little bit. Hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks.